All right, so I've got a couple other topics to look at here. One is uh, rendering responses, and you can see really it kind of boils down to what you see at the bottom here. So if you were to, to take an instance of an article or articles and append to it the dot .save, which triggers that, that save method, you're, it basically what it's telling you is it's either going to work or it's not. And you're passing in a number of different approaches that you could use and here are some examples of, of what some of those are. Another thing that that we can do with all this routing stuff is we can actually redirect people to a different page based upon the input. So the one thing that, that you can put in that routes RB file is a directive that looks like this where you redirect to a particular path and that can be relative to an ID or a title or whatever parameters you're you're passing. All right. So the one thing that they're trying to also point out to you is like what takes a class file and turns it into a controller, and that's basically because you know you you give it a name, but remember in this language when you see this symbol, what does that mean? Give me a, another language equivalent to that little symbol. Exactly right, <laughs> as they all bark it, bark it out. It's equivalent like in Java when we do extends something else. So really what you're doing is you're pulling in, like, you know, Action Controller has a whole bunch of methods and stuff that it does natively, and we're just creating it and pulling in all those uh, capabilities just by that little... Uh, you know, symbol there, a little very simple syntax. All right, so we looked at some of the basics for routing uh, and for controllers. Uh, the next thing that we're going to look at is the template part of it, and that's where we have these um, embedded Ruby files. We also have these J builders where we work with JSON. But basically, what we have really are HTML files that have Ruby encapsulated within them, and think of what PHP and ASP do, but the difference is, is when the embedded Ruby runs, the output is a page, and you don't see the file extension anyhow, because really the, the browser is kind of doing all that in the background. All right. So once again, they want us to like bring up our, our browser, which we already have up and running, so you shouldn't close that Rails server, just keep it going. Um, and what they're trying to show you here is where this is created from because this is kind of a, a you know a kind of a cryptic approach to finding something what they're pointing out is this thing that you're looking at the view is actually generated by a file in this folder so you go to app views articles and then index html erb so let's go to that folder and, and just take a really quick look so app views articles and then notice that for articles we have template files that just just so happen to match up with all those predefined methods that were in the controller that were automatically generated when we ran the generate and the scaffolding that happened that's all done automatically so if you open up any one of these in this case we're going to look at index you can see that there's a bunch of HTML in here. Some very common looking HTML tags. Notice that on occasion we have uh, Ruby code embedded with its uh, delimiter tags here. And remember when you see this equal sign that means the Ruby is expected to generate output to the screen. When you see Ruby code that doesn't have that in there, it's not expected to generate it to the screen, it's just running. Okay. Notice how it's interspersed with the HTML. Notice it's, it's pretty easy to understand. Here's an example of one without the equal sign. Once again, we're kind of looping through all the articles. And the way that we're doing that is we create an instance of the articles, then we step through each one of the records, and then for each one of the records, we are going to take the title, location, etc., 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 and we're going to output each one of those to a, a table data cell in one row 
of the table. That's what, it, that's what it's doing. And by virtue of this command, it's doing it in the loop. And this is a little bit cleaner than what you would see in like PHP or ASP in terms of what the code looks like. The principles are exactly the same though. So that's what's in that file. So when we type in uh, localhost 3000 slash articles, it finds this file and runs this code. And what's fascinating about it is, notice that there's not like a HTML and a header and a body and all that kind of stuff. That, that's Clearly that's happening somewhere else. And that should kind of remind you a little bit of PHP in that like you create a, a skeleton and then those are separately and somewhere down the line they're all kind of merged together and it comes out as an HTML file. Because if we do look at it in the browser, and you should look at it in the browser and still right click the source, you're going to see that, you know, the doc type and all that stuff at the top and the body is all there. So this stuff is coming in from somewhere else. But the stuff that is in the body is stuff that we're seeing in that file. But in, in the spots where there's information, that's where the Ruby code is generating it. Also notice, again, the project relative root folder URLs. That it helps to make the whole application portable as well. All right, so we've got the views. So I, hopefully you're kind of getting a, a feel for that. And then we also have inside the views folder a thing called layouts. And let's go back to our folder structure again and take a look. And just go up a level. So you can see we've got app, views, and then clearly we have one for articles. But then we also have this layouts folder. And you'll see that inside here, we also have some pre-built components. So let's open up, and I'm assuming this is what they're doing here. Um, all right, so they want us to look at app, views, layouts, articles. And I'm not seeing that one. Are you guys, do you guys have that one? No. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to take a look at this one, the application one. So let's open that. And we can make some assumptions about what's going to go here. Now you see the head and the body, right? The closing, opening and closing HTML. And then notice that really what we have is kind of the equivalent of like includes of sorts. So looks like this tag here automatically pulls in whatever meta tags we have predefined like the character set or if you have like uh, keyword descriptions that kind of thing you also have one that's preset for the style sheet notice that it's also being passed parameters we also have one that, that it brings in all the JavaScript stuff and this is stuff that we can predefine so like if you wanted, you could also hard code stuff in here. So if you had like a web page design that you wanted to make custom, right? You could very easily custom code HTML straight in here or do what they're doing here and actually write Ruby code that pulls it in. That's completely uh, up to you. But this is, once again, an HTML file basically interspersed with embedded Ruby. And this is the framework that we're pumping into for the whole application. Notice that they also have things built in for the mailer. We'll, we'll talk about that uh, separately. Future topics. All right, so it says, layouts always default to the most specific declaration. Um, so what we need to do here is take a look at what yield does. What do you suppose yield means? Well, you know what it means when you're driving, right? What does it mean when you're driving? Just somebody come and let them go first, right? So that's kind of what it means here, too, believe it or not. Um, okay, but what it says here, whenever you put the yield keyword is where your content goes. That's where it's going to push. So that file that we were just looking at, because the word yield also has a second meaning. What's its second meaning? Right? <laughs> like, 
Like if you plant a crop, at the end of the year you harvest it. And that's called your yield, believe it or not. It's what you're producing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, all right. <laughs> See what I'm trying? I'm teaching you guys some English as well. And you guys already knew it, but I'm just kind of pulling it out of your brains, I think. All right, so they have like some commonalities that they look at here. Um, now, the other thing that they want to do is it says here, let's look at the new template in action. All right, so we're going to go to a different file now. So we're still going to be in the views folder, articles, and then new HTML ERB. So back up a level, and then go back to articles, and then we're going to open up the new. Remember, this is automatically generated. And then notice that what happens here is this format, well, first of all, they throw an H1 in, but it's, gonna, it's got a couple of Ruby commands that are expected to do output. What are they going to render? They're going to render a form. That's pretty easy to understand. Um, and then what are they going to render it for? Well, the, the object, the current instance of the articles that are pulled up from the model. And then we're going to also uh, apparently create a link where the, the thing that will hold the link or that looks like a link will say back. And that will be a link back to the articles page. That's what this all means here. So hopefully that, that helps to clarify. Another one that you want to uh, take a look at, um, so the edit page. And what they're trying to show you here is both of these pages do need to render a form, right? Because if you're going to make an edit um, or you're going to create a new one, you need a form to do it with. The question is, where does that form come from? That should be the question you're asking yourself. Well, funny you ask. Uh, <laughs> um, there is a file in the same folder, I don't know if you noticed it or not, that notice it starts with an underscore, but this is the form that they're referring to. Once again, this is automatically generated, and what it does is it looks at when, when we generate the model and we generate the controllers, it looks at all the, the, the database components and the model components and it builds this file or which generates a HTML form that has fields for all the stuff that we're working with. So if you look at this, you know, it says uh, div class field, there's a label for it, title, and then there's a text field. Okay, well, that, that, that's pretty easy to understand. So that, you know, if you generate that form, so for example, we can kind of see how that behaves, really. We can go to our browser where the application's running. You notice how we have a new article? And you guys also notice as I hover over it, right below my mouse here, how it says articles slash new. And then when you click on it, It goes really slow. <laughs> I don't know if yours is going really slow like that. 